Oh, oh, it, it found something. Account sign up, open in browser. Let's take a look at it. We can like cancel this one. So stop. And we found the account sign up. Let's open it in a new tab. It's very important that the subject of the message specified that you're requesting credentials. Okay. And we need the username. So let's say uh, credentials. The username could be user name equals semi. Why not? And the email. Let's just take this one from Penelope and maybe I can still comment anything. We are processing a request. Temporary access is given with guest guess. Wow. Okay. We've, we've guessed so much in the last episode. Maybe now we can see what's in requests. Nothing. Fantastic. You know what? Let's just do some fussing for virtual hosts and that's done like so. Yes. Okay. So let's go with this and here we have. What do we have? Subdomains enum. Okay. We don't need this FS over here. We will find out what the FS is for us real quick. And over here, we change this from POV to red cross and in here as well, we do a red cross. And now we fuss for, okay. We don't need words 20. Maybe we filter it with FW 20. Okay. This seems to do what exactly, exactly what I wanted. I, I try, I'm starting to understand the tool that I'm using. Uh, maybe this was almost a bit too much. Maybe the correct response also contains just 20. I mean, yeah, now we finished and we got nothing. Maybe let's, uh, let's just filter out the filter code one. Okay, let's remove the filter entirely. Let's break it up in here and let's take a look at what's happening. There was one that looked weird or was it? Okay, this just looks weird. Intern, maybe internal, something like this. You know what? Maybe we don't have to try like the big list. Maybe we can go with a list that's a bit smaller, like the 5,000 list. I do it doesn't look like we're getting any useful information with this entire thing. Doesn't seem to be what I want. I'm looking for maybe like an internal endpoint or an admin endpoint or like an API endpoint or something like that, because it looks like we can't do anything on this website. Also, I'm not sure if it works like this. I mean, it usually does work like this, maybe an admin or an API thing or something like that into the, into the host files instead of just keeping it like it is. I mean, what kind of weird stuff is in this list anyways? Look at the things that we've got in this list. We have Tesla marketplace, www.alumni. Uh, and keep in mind, those are subdirectories. So it's going to be www.alumniredcross.htp. I mean, it, it doesn't tell me anything useful here. Maybe we try this uh, with like burp or curl. I have this and to repeater. So if we send this with like intra, we get employers and providers portal. If we render it, we get a loading screen. Okay. So it doesn't seem to be discoverable this way, right? It's because I get the same thing for now here I get a moved permanently, but when I do admin, I get a misdirected request. So you know what? We're going to try a little maneuver, which I like to call cheating or just like guessing and being lucky. In here, we put just a couple of other things and we test if they exist. We have API dot red cross HTB and maybe we have dot red cross dot HTB, right? Maybe we have something like that. And let's get this one. Right. And let's just put them each on a line. I'm pretty sure there is like a super fast way to do this, but we're going to do this by hand at host. First of all, do a whole host run to check out. Okay. We get all of them. Now we can do the magic, which is curl and then host and then gets. We only want to see if it exists. So let's just get the header. Okay. We get them moved permanently for all of them now. So I guess let's just open up each of those hosts. So let's take a look at the red cross without anything in there. It should be S. Zack, zack. Maybe I should have added the DPS. We have red cross. Okay. This just redirects us to intra. What do we have else? We have intra. We have API dot red cross. Maybe we find some API endpoints that we can hack into. This could be interesting. API dot red. Should be to accept the risk and continue. Okay, nothing. We have the requests. Maybe we can check out what requests we added via the request form. Okay, somehow it redirected us somewhere completely different. We have internal. Maybe we get some internal. I mean, we have intra. Is internal not the same as intra? Apparently it is. 
And we have ad admin, maybe after admin, we can try a dashboard or something like that. Oh, we found something. Sometimes manual and tedious work uh, actually works. Okay. And we log in with guest here as well. Not enough privileges. All right. So it looks like we need to become some kind of admin. What's our cookie? Like this is our PHP session ID. Uh, how can I copy the value? Burp suit time. Yes, maybe we could do something with burp suit. But first of all, I want to try like we have this session ID over here and paste like just the other session ID and it works. That would be fantastic, you know. Otherwise, we'll move on to burp suit. Okay, so now I changed the session ID and it worked. Nice. Sometimes it's like the simple tricks that work, which now means we have user management and network access access okay why but why does it work like this do they not properly sanitize sanitize the, the inputs or the cookies well we don't care we have a trisha wait can i ssh into the box was it really that easy and then i'm saying it at red plus of hdb yes okay i'm in apparently what's in public wait who am i you What's this thing? Something about network access? Oh, wait, this is C code. This looks like I can inject. Now, this is getting interesting. Apparently, we have like some comment that we can do with whatever this code can do, which seems to be the network thing. So let's get back here to the network access. We have the classic whitelist IP address. Okay, now let's do a quick test. Okay, invalid IP address for a month. And I think it's... It's about to be burping time. And now we want this one and send it to the repeater. And now we want to find out if we can like inject some code. So let's do an LS or something like that. Okay, so this tells me it's an invalid IP address format. We need to find a way to like make it ignore that it's an invalid IP address format. Now, who's telling this? Is this done by the backend? I mean, we have access to the code. We can just read it. Do we have Vim? And then we have IP address. Okay, so it doesn't seem to come from this was. Okay, so we need to find a way to bypass this entire thingy, which maybe it's just enough to like URL encode with will be. I doubt it because it's not a correct IP address format. Yeah, we have to find some way to circumvent this entire thing. Six. Hmm. Okay, maybe that's not our actual endpoint that we have to, but I mean, is this the endpoint that we're looking for? Because here we have like the action and here our action just gets copied. Okay, so we get a quick check if we are running the correct code. So apparently it's not this one, but in here it has to do something with the IP address. We just need the way to abuse this IP address input to bypass the check somehow let's go back to the admin panel we have network access which is just this part we have user management what does this one i mean this should create a user on the system so it would be running system code in the back end right right or is there more things that we can do i mean i can delete this one right okay we have deleted the user account mm -hmm. and we can allow network access oh but we can also deny it right okay so maybe the deny one is right let's send this to repeater maybe in here we can do like an id we have found our common injection vector and now we can do the magic stuff which is to just create a reverse shell i mean easy peasy lemon squeezy right i mean first of all let's first check out if we can connect for our re and i'm guessing that www www data has more access than just some random user you create by the interface uh oh, not that's that let's go in here mozilla we go to ref shells and in here we just copy this one. We go in here, we paste that one in here. Boom, boom, tack. Now what's our IPA? It's this one. So let's grab this one. Boom. And we have the codes that we want to inject. But before we do that, we have to find out, can I even ping C my IP, right? And then we have to tell this thing to like URL encode everything. Or, or I mean, maybe let's send it like this. Okay, so this does absolutely nothing. Okay, let's send it like this. I mean, the LS worked, right? Do I do something wrong with ping? I mean, it is. Maybe I have to like circumvent spaces. If command again, followed by my IP address, which is 10 
send this and it's taking longer so okay it can connect to my machine so now in this part has to become a reverse shell okay let's try it all right let's do just i mean yeah encoding url encode boom let's copy this one let's go in here we paste the perfect payload and it doesn't seem to have worked let's just copy this one or I'm not sure if we may have bash no and i find bash to be in bash like this let's copy it let's go in here let's go one back and paste this command in here now we will have issues with the spaces apparently as we saw before replace the spaces with the internal field separator as it's called in linux and now in here because we have like the ampersand and url encode key characters and it they don't work we need to find them i mean maybe this one is as simple as just having a plus instead of all the other things maybe it's maybe we need to find another payload to once a simpler one you know one that doesn't have any ampersand right something like this why doesn't it work it should be working maybe i'm just too stupid right maybe i should have done a bind shell i'm not sure i have to find the correct shell so bash e shouldn't be it this has too many ampersand this one should be like a pretty simple one right just netcat back to it and then it should work i mean does it have bash that's the other question you know maybe it's the other question is does it have ends and so, so let's just switch and see okay we get no this is going to be a problem if we don't have NC. You can do that with AW UK. What the hell? I mean, let's check out if we have bash. And maybe maybe we just have to go with this one. But URL encoded. I mean, didn't we already try this and have no success whatsoever? Like this maybe. Okay, we get nothing in return. That's weird. Is this a good sign or a bad sign? It's not a good sign. Which? I will look for which bash. Right, bin bash. Okay, we have bin bash, so this shouldn't be really a problem. Let's go in here. Now, if we send this, nothing's gonna happen, right? Because it doesn't understand that this ampersand is to be escaped. Can we escape it? It should be percent 26, right? Like this, tag 26. Hmm. I feel like the NC one would be the best way, but we don't have netcat on the machine. What way could we use to create the reverse shell? It 